and man got saved. Well, I went ahead and preached. I'm talking about the first night of revival. Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you, God to put something in you yeah. to let you know it can happen again. Yeah. Right. Well, that man got saved, Jake. Well, I preached. There's a woman back in the back. I can still see her. She had blonde hair. I don't know who she was. I, I see her back there right now. I can see her. She raised her hand. She come down and she got saved that night at the, after the preaching. Well, when she got saved, when she got done getting saved, the pastor said, stand up testify. She stood up and testified and she said, will all of you wait here for me? She said, I just live right down the road. And she said, my husband's lost. And she said, I don't want my husband to die and go to hell. She said, would y'all just wait for... She said, I'm going home to get my husband to bring him back to this revival. And I, I just looked at the pastor and I said, just have them to sing. Just, keep, just have them to sing. They sung four or five songs. I'll never forget that back door slamming, coming open, slamming, hitting that wall. Here she come. And that man had his hand in his face, crying. Brought him right down to the altar. Revival. Yeah. Revival. Wouldn't you like to see God yes. sit, do that again? Yeah, yeah. Them men spent four weeks under them old big locust trees up there on a hill praying. God can still do that. Yeah. He can still do that. Go ahead. That. Then we'll let the preacher come. Praise God. Ain't you glad that all these little old young'uns are singing for the Lord? Amen. Now that means something to Jesus tonight. He loves that. Let's pray for the preacher tonight. I love Brother Jacob, and, and we just tickled to death. He gets to come up and be with us some on Wednesday nights, and they just just love him, appreciate him. Amen. You pray for him, he'll preach to you. I know he will. Come on. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, oh, yeah. The Hill of Tennis Revival down here, where you turn up to the valley down the way and come in here, you can't teach you to say, you find his Hill Revival down there. That's sick, you saw things like, oh, bless you, God's sake. The Hill of Tennis Revival down there, and I was young, man, and young kids. I was probably 12 or something. But anyway, when they hit that Tennis Revival down there in that little flat spot, there's that big white house. Bless you, God. Five hicks and them hit up that revival in that tent, anyway. Every time, every evening, we come in there and do that every Bible. Uncle Clyde makes about six or seven of them climbing that mountain. 
they climb a hill right there and they go up a hill in the woods. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Oh. Step in them woods. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on. Step up in them woods. Yeah. 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 F him go. Yeah. Yeah. F him go. They don't go that like that no more. And I'm sick to some people say you can not fit me. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just want to share Thank that. you for doing that. Thank, Thank you, Clyde. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Lester Sexton, all that more what over up to Flat Rock, they all used to go back in there in the, in them woods and and, and pray and things yeah. and you 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 see the see the fire fall. The results, yes. Amen. The fire fall there. Amen. 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 Bless you, Jacob. Anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Let's preach to us over. Appreciate it. Well, I appreciate Brother Jason, and I, I really wish you would preach. I feel like you got the burden tonight. Uh, we'll try to obey God. I uh, feel like you put this on my heart just a minute ago. Uh, we'll try to obey the Lord. I'm going to sing this song for the Lord real fast. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus yeah. than okay. houses or lands. I'd rather be led Amen. by His nail pierced hands than to be the King of a vast domain yeah. or be held yeah. in sin's transwain. I'd rather yeah. have Jesus than anything this world affords today. I'd rather have Jesus Amen. than men's applause. I'd rather be faithful Amen. to His dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather to his holy name for he's fairer than the lilies of rarest bloom he's sweeter than honey from out of the comb he is all that my hungry And just let him lead Amen. than to be the king yeah. of a vast domain yeah. or be held yeah. in sin's yeah. transwain. Yeah. I'd rather yeah. have Jesus than in. world can afford today and that's my heart I heard brother uh, a guy years ago when, with Billy Graham uh, I can't remember the name of him now what's my favorite George Beverly Shay Caddy can because I drove crazy with him but uh, he said this is my testimony and I stole it from him that's my testimony tonight, brother. I'd rather have Jesus oh, than yeah. anything in the whole world. And I was looking back tonight, and I saw your face. And I said, thank God. Because if I remember right, I think it was, what, the last two revivals ago, I don't think you were saved, if I, if I remember that right. Yeah, right. Am I right? But look what God's done, and I thank God for it. Yeah. God's doing mighty things. I've seen that little blonde-headed girl testify tonight, and I mean, when I first saw her testify, she's just a shaking and, you know, real red in the face, and God's using you. Yeah. God's using you, and that's amazing. Now, we should rejoice we, and be yeah. glad, because we all see the evidence of what God's still doing yeah, today. Right, I'm not going 
won't be long, I promise you. I wish Brother Jason, I felt like he had a burden really heavy on his heart. And uh, I could have just sit here and listen. I would have been just fine with it. But we'll be going to 1 Kings chapter number 18. 1 Kings chapter number 18. And we'll start reading in verse number 24. First Kings chapter number 18 and verse number 24. And the Bible says, And call ye on the name of your gods. And I, I've read this a time or two, and I looked at this, but it stood out to me, I guess this time, the last time I read this, more so than it's ever stood out to me. I want you to notice how Elijah the prophet was speaking to the prophets of Baal and Ahab. He said, And ye call on the name of your gods, little g. Yeah. He doesn't know who real God was, and he knew who was going to win the battle. But I want to just throw that out there. There's a lot of gods, but we serve a mighty big God. We serve the true God. Amen. And you call on the name of your gods and I will call on the name of the Lord, capital L. And the God, he already knew who was going to win the battle. And he said, the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. Yeah. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done in my life. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to speak your word tonight, God. I thank you, Lord, for an opportunity. God, just to be able to speak the word of God. It's so powerful to me. It's so mighty to me, your word. Thank you for everything that's already been done. All the young people that sung. God, thank you, Lord, for a generation that's coming up after us. God, thank you so much for your presence here tonight. God, we ask you to help me. In Jesus' name. Amen. But I, I, I want to reiterate that again. And I just want you to notice the confidence that the man of God had when he was speaking to these uh, ungodly priests, these prophets of Baal, this, yeah. this idol worship uh, by the name of Baal. And he said, and you call on the name of your God, your gods, yeah. which was many, but he said, we know they were worshiping Baal, but they had to call on anybody they could get attention from, I guess what he, what he was trying to say. Yeah. And uh, he says, he says, you call on your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And that's what I want to preach on tonight. If God will help me. I, I preach. I have preached this a time or two, and uh, this is just what the Lord's laid on my heart tonight. I didn't know, Brother Jason, coming up the road I, when you texted me, I really wasn't ready to preach, but we'll see what God's got in store, so it may be God's will tonight. So you pray for me. And uh, I want to preach on tonight the God that answers by fire. Uh, God, all through the Bible, uh, refers to and has uh, used the word fire in his scriptures. How uh, God has referred to the fire of judgment, not just the fire that comes uh, in Malachi uh, 3 and 3 when it says the refiner's fire and I'm going to get to that in just a minute but God uses fire all throughout the Bible uh, for a representation of how he wants things done a uh, fire of an action reveals God's work in a number of ways uh, one of the earliest and clearest of these ways is his appearance uh, in a pillar of fire that led the children of Israel out of Egypt and through the Sinai deserts in Exodus 13 and 21 Another instance how God uses fire as an active manifestation of his presence uh, is ascending fire from heaven to consume sacrifices uh, uh, from off the altar in a special and unusual occasion. In Leviticus 9 and 23 and 24, uh, Aaron is going to be inaugurated as a priest uh, and God uses a manifestation of fire uh, to consume the sacrifices on the altar. If there's ever been a day, and I know that y'all are about to go in revival, uh, from what I hear tonight, how that you're about to go uh, and you're seeking for a revival. Uh, but if there's ever been a day and an hour where we need the church uh, uh, needs to have a fire, uh, it's the day in which we live. Uh, I'm not talking about uh, a fire and I love it just as much as anybody uh, uh, when people start shouting and running and praising God uh, and I love all that. Uh, uh, but that's not just what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm talking about a soul stirring fire uh, that takes you out in a prayer place uh, that's already been mentioned here many times tonight. Uh, uh, it don't matter what nobody else around you thinks. Uh, it don't matter what the world thinks. Uh, it don't matter what your wife thinks. Uh, uh, but you get in tune with God uh, and God sets a blaze uh, inside of your heart uh, and stirs.
stirs up something in you uh, uh, that moves you uh, and stirs you uh, uh, to be a witness uh, uh, for Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I want to have a fire inside of me. Now Charles Spurgeon said, without the Spirit of God we can do nothing. Uh, we are ships without wind uh, or chariots without steeds. Uh, uh, like branches without sap, we are withered. Uh, uh, like coals without fire, uh, uh, we are useless. Uh, uh, without the Spirit of God tonight, uh, uh, the church would not be where they are right now. Uh, and you can just imagine, uh, I've heard somebody say this the other day, uh, and I'm just gonna try to take my time and give you what the Lord uh, is speaking to my mind right now and my heart. Uh, hey, I heard a man say the other day, uh, a young person said to them, uh, he said, well, uh, uh, we can have church. Uh, uh, we've got enough knowledge to have church. Uh, hey, uh, I'm not going off of head knowledge. Uh, I'm going off of heart knowledge. Uh, it's not by might. Uh, it's not by power. Uh, but it's by my spirit, uh, uh, saith the Lord. Uh, we come to a day where we know what to do. Uh, uh, we know when to say amen. Uh, uh, we know when to shout. Uh, uh, we know when to sing. Uh, uh, but I would to God uh, uh, we'd get to a time uh, where the spirit of God uh, uh, would take us over uh, and consume us uh, and stir us up. Uh, my God, I wish you heard me tonight. Uh, we need to get back uh, to having the fire uh, of God uh, moving in our hearts. Amen. 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 Is that all right, Brother Jason? Yeah. Am I telling you the truth tonight? Without the Spirit of God, we are nothing. Uh, we're useless. I want to read this last part. As an offering without the sacrificial flame. Hey, I'll just be honest with you, getting to my text now. Uh, we see this, uh, uh, these 450 prophets of Baal uh, and how they get out there, Brother Brandon, uh, brother, and they get out there and they get all stirred up uh, and they get all motivated. Uh, you know how this new modern worship is, Brother Paul. Uh, they've got to do a little dancing, uh, a little jigging, uh, to stir up some kind of spirit. Uh, hey, I love feeling the spirit, uh, but I love when the spirit uh, uh, stirs me up. Uh, hey, I'm not trying to jiggle and wiggle uh, to feel a little sensation on my hands uh, or to feel a little sensation in my bones. Uh, hey, but when I come to the house of God, uh, I want to be like David uh, and say I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I want a fire. I want to be burning for Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to go somewhere. I feel, I'm starting to feel the Lord, Brother Jason. I want to obey God. But I want to deal with something before you can look at the aspect of this scripture now. I want to deal with another fire. The fire of judgment. And I'm going to get, I'm going to get back to my text in just a minute. But I want to talk about another fire before I can go anywhere. To the fire that God answered Elijah with. And the fire that he used all through the scripture. And I'm going to try to tie this fire all the way back to Acts all the way up to Acts chapter number two. If God will help me. But before we can go into a fire of the church getting stirred up and revived, we must remember there's coming a fire. And I feel the Lord to preach tonight, Brother Jason, a fire of judgment that's coming against the church and against the world. Hey, everybody's a little easy on the sin problem. But we got a problem in the church. It's not just in the church of God. God. It's not just in the holiness church. It's not just in Antioch House of Prayer. It's in the church in general. We've got a day where we live where nobody wants to live right anymore. Nobody wants to dress right anymore. But I heard an old black preacher just say the other day, he said holiness is still right. And if I'm the leader of this congregation, I'm going to preach holiness until the day I die. That was his words. But that that was in 1989. If you look at his congregation now, he backed up on God. They got their makeup on. They got their jewelry on. They got every ungodly thing on. I don't want to back up. And I don't want to use holiness as a byword. I want to preach.
preach what thus saith the Lord and never back down and never give in because too many men have given up and they back down and let men and women of the church rule their pulpits. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Is that all right? Am I preaching wrong? No, or am I preaching right? Y'all say amen if I am. Say on me if I'm not. Oh, God, help me. God, help me just for a minute. We've come to a day where we're so easy on the sin problem. But in Isaiah 66 and 15, God refers to a coming judgment and paints us a picture of God coming with fire and bringing down his rebuke with flames of fire. The scripture says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For if he sows to the flesh, he shall of the flesh reap corruption. But if he sows to the spirit, he shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Be not deceived in thy church. God, I feel you right now. We've come to a day where we feel like just because God ain't judged us right now, he's just going to look over it. But he's not looking over it. He's not letting it go. He's not letting it by. But one day there's coming a God whose eyes are as a flame of fire. And he's going to come after a bride that's spotless and without blemish. I want to God that I could challenge you tonight to come and repent of your sins. That's what my heart is tonight. I was, I was talking to a man the other day, and he said this. He said, we've come to a day where men feel like, and you, you preached it down at Old Fort, Brother Jason, just because judgment over there in Proverbs, I believe it is, just because judgment is not executed speedily, a men's hearts, they, they continually evil. Is that right? They go upon wicked, Sister Scarlet. And we've come to a day where we feel like, well, we got by with it. We got by with it. I wish somebody was hearing me. Y'all have heard that before. You've heard men that used to preach the truth. They used to preach the truth with power and with anointing. And now they say, well, I don't think it's that way anymore. I don't think it's that way anymore. If it was right in 1985, it's still right today in 2021. A woman should look like a woman. A woman should wear a dress. A woman should act like a woman and submit to her husband. A man ought to love his wife and not take his shirt off and not take his pants off and wear ungodly shorts. I wish somebody hear me preach. It's still right. Holiness is still right. And we need it in 2021. That's right, Jay. Good preaching. Right. Y'all with me? Come on, everybody raise your hand. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There you go. That's how I like it. That's how I like it, Brother Jason. Amen. But God's coming after a church that's spotless. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying, let me refer to something real fast. I'm not saying we don't all have flaws and we don't all mess up and sin a little bit every now and then because I'd be a foolish man to believe that, Brother Jason. Yeah. He said, you... He said, if any man does sin, 1 John 2 and 2, 2 and 1, if any man does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, uh, Jesus Christ the righteous, uh, and he is a propitiation for us, uh, for all of us right here, uh, that's under the sound of my voice, uh, but not just for us, uh, but for the sins of the whole world. Uh, God does love us and God, God does care about us, uh, uh, but listen to what John, how he said it, uh, if you do sin, uh, if you do commit sin, uh, we're not of sin anymore. We ain't bound by the power of sin. Sin does not have dominion over us anymore. I'm a child of the Most High God and he saved me from the power and the penalty of sin. I'm not going to die and go to hell anymore. But not by my might, not by my power, but by his spirit saith the Lord. Amen. 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 God bless you. Yes, sir. But by his spirit saith the Lord. All right. I'll just be honest with you. 
Brother Jason, I don't know if you remember. I'm just going to preach my heart tonight. I don't know if this is on recording. If it is, so be it. If it ain't, it is what it is. But when I used to preach, when I first got started, Brother Jason, all I preached on was women wearing pants. I mean, I did. Ever so, it seemed like every service I was preaching on women wearing pants. That was one of my big pet peeves. And I can see some of y'all's eyes going down when I say that. I'm not trying to be mean, okay? That's just how I, that's how I was. Uh, but God got a hold of me and said there's a lot more to sin than just a woman wearing pants. You ever deal with a sin problem and you get to the root of it? Amen. You ever get down to the root of the nitty gritty of it? You get down to their heart? Oh, you get down to the inside of their heart? Hey, that's just a little ceiling that's going on. Hey, but if you ever get down to the root of the problem and you dig it out and you give them Jesus Christ, you won't have to preach on it all the time. You just tell them about Jesus and he'll get down to the nitty gritty, as my son says. He'll get down there and he'll reach in there and he'll pull it out. Amen. Amen. Bless you, Jesus. Come on. God bless you. Lord, I wish you could help me. But this is something that I read the other day, and I look, I'm a book reader. I'm not ashamed of it. I like reading books. And I read this from Charles Finney the other day. He said, Revival is renewed conviction of sin and repentance, yeah. followed by the intense desire to live in obedience to God. It is giving up one's will to God in deep humility. Yeah. I want to read that again so you'll get it across to you. <laughs> Revival is renewed conviction. Those things that you used to never do, you need to go back and you need to say, God, I made a vow. I guess I just need to obey God here. I feel this in my spirit, Brother Jason. Hey, you need to go back to the things that you used to do that you laid aside for God, but you picked them back up again. Hey, the Bible says you would not vow a vow unless you repay it. God would not even want you to say, I won't do it. I won't do it. And then you do it. Hey, the Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. Am I preaching all right, Brother Jason? I hope I am. I'm trying to help the church. We need as a church to go back to the old landmarks and cry out to God and say, God, restore to me the joy of your salvation. I've picked up some things. I've got some things in my life. I renew a right spirit in me, God. Renew revival in me, God. And I promise you one thing. You'll have a fire start burning. You'll have a fire start churning inside of your life that you've never seen before. That's right. Amen. That's good, Jason. I feel like I'm preaching to the wall tonight, God. Come on. You're doing good, Jason. Yeah. You're doing good. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in this body according to that which he hath done. Amen. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Yeah. There's coming a day where God's fire is going to come upon this earth. And God's going to consume this whole earth. First or Second Peter talks about God coming and burning this whole earth with fire. Yeah. There's coming a fire of judgment. But I want to talk about in Malachi 3 and 2. Sister Sarah, if you want to, or where's, where's she at? There she is. Praise God. I want to talk about in Malachi 3 and 2. And this is where I want to talk to the church for just a minute. He talks about a, a fire, a refiner's fire in Malachi chapter number 3 and verse number 2. Yeah. And the Bible says, But who may abound, who may abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord the offerings of righteousness. Now I talked about the fire that God answered to Elijah by. How he answered the God, he answered the Lord, answered Elijah by fire. Now if you go back in your scriptures and you read uh, we read of another fire in Acts chapter number 2 uh, and verse number 3 uh, and the Bible says and there appeared unto them uh, cloven tongues like as 
Fire. Say it again. Like as fire. And it is sat upon each of them. And now this this fire, this word, is referred all the way back to the fire that came down to Elijah. But it's not just that fire. But it's the fire that is referred to in Matthew chapter number 3 and verse number 11. When John tells his disciples that there's one that's coming after me whose shoes I'm not able to even loose. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. God is still answering with fire. God wants to give you a fire like the day of Pentecost. He wants to stir you up and set you ablaze. I'm not talking about so you can shake your head and jump the pews, but I'm talking about in Acts chapter number one, verse number eight, experience where the Bible says ye shall be witnesses unto me in Judea, in Jerusalem, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. We don't preach that you gotta get a fire to run the aisles, but I do preach that you need a fire to win the loss, to win the loss back to God. This not this stuff is not winning the loss. Hey, I go to school, but education is not going to win the loss. Hey, what's going to win the loss? It's you getting on fire for God Almighty. Amen. Yes. Amen, preacher. Yes. Y'all are laughing tonight. Oh, you doing good. You doing good. Why do we need the fire? We need fire for ministry. Acts chapter number one, verse number eight. I don't said it to you. But he made his men angels, he saith. Hebrews 1 and 7. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Yeah. Amen. Bless you, God. Number two, for guidance. I'm going to slow down and just talk for just a minute. I feel like this is the way I need to go. Number two for guidance, John 16 and 13. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Yeah. For he shall not speak of himself, but for what whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you in all things to come. I've got a reason for slowing down. I feel like God's trying to do something in somebody's heart. Ephesians 2, number 3, for refining. Ephesians 2 and 10. This is the whole will of God right here. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Yeah. God is trying to make you into His image yeah. so that you can be the light of the world. That's right. And when we play games with God, Sister Sarah, if you want to play whenever you're ready, if we play games with God, we're doing nobody no more harm than Jesus Christ. Yeah. We're hurting Him. I love my wife. I love her with all my heart. But when me and her got a little, I guess you could say, schism going on, and we don't argue. We, we try not to argue. We do have a little spat every now and then, Brother Jason. When there's something wrong there, man, it kills me. I mean, I am a crybaby. Yeah, I am. I'm a legit crybaby. I am. I mean, I go crazy. I'll pester her to death, man. Yeah. I will. I'll drive her crazy until she says, look, what's wrong? You got to get her out. I can't stand this. God's trying to make you into His image. And when there's friction there, you never can work with Him. But I wrote this down. I want to read this, and I thought it was so good. It's a poem called The Refiner's Fire. And it says it like this. As she watched the silversmith, he held a piece of silver over the fire and let it heat up. He explained that in refining silver, one needed to hold the silver in the middle of the fire, where the flames were the hottest, as to burn away all the impurities. Yeah. The woman thought about God holding us up in such a manner, in such a hot spot. Then she thought again of Malachi 3 and 3. 
a refiner's fire. Brother Jason's talked about revival tonight. And he talked about what it needed to be, what you needed to do to get it. It does need to be in us. It does need to be in us. And I want to finish this because i got a point. She asked the silversmith if it was true. Did he have to sit the whole time in the silver as it was being refined? Refined. He said, yes. And this is what he had to say, the silversmith. He said, I have to keep my eyes on the silver the whole time. That it will stay in at the correct amount of time. And then she asked, how do you know when it is finished? He replied, when I see myself in the silver. God wants to make something out of you. God wants to do something with your life. And I realize, I realize, Brother Jason, what you've already said. It takes us going up and, and walking, walking the hills and going up in the altars and praying and seeking God's face. But you know what God wants to do for us? Sometimes even when we don't even we don't do that, I'm just being honest with you. When we don't do that, Brandon, God's holding us the whole time and He's refining us and wanting us to just say, look, just go on to Him. Look on to Him. Just cry on to Him. I know this is trying to get this across the way it needs to be. Sometimes we feel like we can do it all on ourselves and we can do it all on ourselves, but sometimes we just need to realize God's holding us in His hands and all He wants us to do is call on His name. That's all He wants us to do is call on His name. This is my altar call tonight. I know I flopped as a preacher tonight. I have, Brother Jason. This is my altar call. Do you really want revival? Do you really want God's image to be shining through your life? That's my question. I mean, is there things that you picked up in the past that you need to lay down? Is there some things, maybe maybe Mountain Dews, maybe soft drinks, maybe uh, the way you used to dress, maybe you just want to lay it down and you say, God, I need to get back to the way it used to be. Does anybody else need to pray tonight?